cast your mind back to the golden years of video games. Those 8-bit and 16-bit days where cartridges were king and 2D was the only D that mattered. Back then, if a game was licensed by Disney, it was almost certainly a mark of quality. Legendary titles such as Castle of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck's games such as Quackshot and the Lucky Dime Caper are all classics, brought up when the conversations turn to retro gaming. Then there are the likes of Aladdin and The Lion King, smoothly animated AAA platformers based on timeless movies that live on as pinnacles of the genre. We're not looking at those today though. We're not even looking at the questionable ones like Beauty and the Beast Bell's Quest and Tailspin, which proved to be exceptions to the whole Disney games were good rule. Instead, we're focusing on some that perhaps don't get the recognition they deserve. The ones that undeservedly faded from memory thanks to the sheer number of quality titles under the Disney label. Call them overlooked, call them underrated, or call them plain forgotten. We're going to shine a light on some of the better classic Disney games that don't get talked about nearly as often. Maybe we'll trigger a mouse or duck based memory that's been lying dormant inside of you all this time. Or maybe we'll inspire you to try something you never knew existed. Either way, prepare for lots of rodents, princesses, living toys, and maybe even a bobcat as we sneak around the house of mouse in search of hidden games. I'm Ashton from Triple Jump, and here are 10 overlooked classic Disney video games. Number 10 Legend of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse. Castle of Illusion and World of Illusion for the Mega Drive, as well as Land of Illusion for the Master System and Game Gear were all top games. These titles formed the Illusion series, a group of delightful games in which Mickey Mouse and or Donald Duck explore whimsical worlds of wonder. Game Gear exclusive Legend of Illusion is the last of these games, and it is often forgotten in favour of the Mega Drive and Master System alternatives. Perhaps hamstrung by its exclusivity to Sega's battery guzzling handheld, Legend of Illusion is still a very competent platformer, with excellent graphics and production values considering the limited hardware. Of course, a Master System version actually was released in Brazil, but the whole Master System in Brazil thing is a subject for another time. In this game, Mickey heads off to save the kingdom by leaping from platform to platform, pushing and pulling blocks around and throwing bars of soap at enemies. The odd choice of ammunition does make sense in context, as Mickey plays the role of a laundry boy sent on a dangerous quest by the cowardly King Pete. Still, if you want to interpret the soap throwing as an indignant Mickey rudely demonstrating his opinion to his enemy's questionable hygiene, then that's fine too. Number 9. Mickey Mouse Magic Wands Another handheld Mickey Mouse outing. This one came out on the far more popular Game Boy, but it still managed to slide into obscurity despite reviewing well. Mixing in a bit of puzzling with its platforming, Mickey Mouse Magic Wands tasks the player with exploring an evil witch's castle while waving Mickey's wand at various crystals. Wave it at the right crystal and Mickey will be able to collect pictures of his friends. Wave it at the wrong crystals and dastardly enemies will pop out. Mickey's able to use his wand-wielding expertise to create temporary blocks, freeze water, and perform other environment-altering feats. These abilities enable the player to figure out creative solutions to tricky level layouts, finding hard-to-reach crystals and avoiding enemies. There's far more on offer here than your standard walk from left to right while jumping on things fair. There are also some obscure characters with the eagle-eyed Disney aficionados to spot. This cow, for example. Not to mention this other cow. Luckily, old favourites like Donald and Goofy are also present. You know, to break up the parade of cows. Number 8. Deep Duck Trouble starring Donald Duck From the famous mouse to the famous duck, Deep Duck Trouble stars the cantankerous Mallard in an adventure of his own. Standing in the shadow of the far more prominent Master System title, The Lucky Dime Caper, Deep Duck Trouble is very similar in terms of gameplay and presentation. This one faded into obscurity compared to its older sibling though, and that likely has a lot to do with the fact that the next generation of consoles was already going strong by the time of its release. Still, those who traded in their Master System for a Mega Drive were inadvertently denying themselves a duck-flavoured treat that still holds up well today. It features great graphics and animation, tight controls, and a fun story concerning Uncle Scrooge being cursed to float around like a big bloated filthy rich balloon, all of which adds up to a fun experience. The game also features some nice set pieces to break up the platforming, including a frantic shark escape and being inside a volcano during an eruption. No wonder Donald is so grumpy all the time. I would be too if this were the sort of thing I had to deal with on a daily basis. Number 7. Bonkers Remember Bonkers? You know, 
the Disney character. Full name Bonkers D. Bobcat, kind of a wacky guy. Yeah, don't worry, I'd forgotten him too. This slapstick, happy, anthropomorphic feline starred in the Bonkers television series, in which he was a bumbling law enforcer in Toontown. The series only ran for a year, from February of 93 to February of 94. And well, let's just say you're unlikely to catch Bonkers D. Bobcat in any parade at Disney World anytime soon. Even so, the guy got a game under his belt before he slid into obscurity, and is a decent one at that. Bonkers was released exclusively for the SNES and developed by Capcom. It was obscure even for the time. It came out in America and Japan but never made it to Europe, and there aren't many contemporary reviews out there to go on either. Still, this is a great platformer for youngsters or people who aren't necessarily in the mood for anything too challenging, and just want to run around as a cartoon character in a fun adventure. All the charm and colour you'd expect from a Disney platformer is present, so you still have plenty of platforming joy, despite having no flipping idea who you're controlling. Number 6. Maui Mallard in Cold Shadow Maui Mallard in Cold Shadow was originally released in 1995, in Europe only, for the Mega Drive. It received a port for the SNES that was released internationally a bit later, and eventually made its way onto PC and Game Boy in North America. Despite getting around a bit though, it's not all that well known. It stars Cold Shadow, a staff-wielding ninja who is the alter ego of Maui Mallard, a caricature of TV detective Magnum P.I. Maui Mallard is himself an alter ego of Donald Duck, who is… well, you know who Donald Duck is. Once you've got your head around the alter ego inception, you're tasked with investigating a tropical island where the mysterious Shaboom Shaboom has gone missing. This all boils down to a fast-paced platform adventure in which Donald Duck as Maui Mallard as Cold Shadow explores mysterious temples, ninja hideouts, volcanoes, and even, somewhat surprisingly, the realm of the dead. Critics praised it for its entertainment value and appeal to beginners and veterans alike. And then it was lost to time. Until now! We're doing important work here, people! Number 5. Darkwing Duck Capcom is back on the scene now, with the Mega Man developer responsible for the 1992 NES game, Darkwing Duck. The superhero parody adventuring series was ripe for a video game adaptation, and Capcom was happy to oblige, cranking out an adventure that shares quite a few similarities with the aforementioned Mega Man. In the game, players take on the role of the Anatine superhero as he navigates a mysterious crime wave that's hit the city of St. Canard. A criminal organisation has hired numerous villains to terrorise the populace, and it's up to Darkwing Duck to put an end to the chaos. The game reviewed well, and there was even whisperings of a surprise sequel in 2018, proposed by Sonic Mania developer Headcanon. While this would have been Ducktastic, it was sadly rejected. The game was also ported to the Game Boy in 1993, and the port was equally heralded as a platforming highlight compared to the slew of generic platformers on the handheld. Not bad for a character I'd confused with Count Duckula all these years. Number 4. Goof Troop Another Capcom Disney venture, Goof Troop is a top-down action-adventure game that allows players to explore various single-screen areas, solve puzzles, collect items, and defeat pirates. Occasionally compared to The Legend of Zelda, Goof Troop probably doesn't quite reach for those heights. It does, however, offer something that it took Zelda until 2004 to achieve with Four Swords Adventure – multiplayer. That's right, from the outset, two players can choose to control either Goofy or his very 90s son, Max, and explore the world together, cooperating to solve puzzles and defeat enemies. Goof Troop's multiplayer was a welcome addition that added a healthy dose of longevity. Reviewers at the time couldn't deny the great graphics and fun gameplay on offer, but a few of them did take issue with the simplicity of the puzzles and the fact that the adventure was a little on the short side. In these busy modern times of Elden Ring, though, No! Oh, you... <laughs> you dick! Something a little more bite-sized that isn't going to stress you out too much might be exactly what the Doctor ordered. Oh. Number 3. Pocahontas while the likes of Aladdin and The Lion King had the settings and protagonists well suited for an action-adventure game, Pocahontas is perhaps a less obvious fit for the genre. That didn't stop developer Funcom from working with Disney and putting one together though, and the result isn't half bad. Players take on the role of Powhatan Princess Pocahontas as she explores locations from the film, using her animal friends to help her through dangerous but majestic forests of Virginia. Rascally Raccoon Miko is also playable, and can get to places that Pocahontas can't, moving rocks and causing distractions to allow our leading lady to pass. 
While the non-violent gameplay is very nice and was rightfully appreciated by many reviewers at the time, the visuals are where the game really shines. From crystal lakes to shaded woods to dimly lit barren cliff faces, everything is artistically realised and beautifully rendered. The developers really did paint with all the colours of the wind. Whatever that means. Number 2. Gargoyles Things get a little bit darker for our next game. But then, when your main protagonist is a creature that turns to stone during the day, that's to be expected, really. Gargoyles was an animated series with a moodier tone. It earned itself a dedicated cult following thanks to its use of ongoing story arcs and its edgier appeal. The darkness of the Gargoyles Genesis adaptation made it stand out a bit from the more traditional Disney offerings. While other Disney games definitely had spookier bits, this one maintained that murky grimness for the whole game. Players take on the role of Goliath, the short-tempered leader of the Manhattan Gargoyle clan. They will explore ruined castles, dingy subways and nighttime rooftops, using Goliath's scary stone talons to claw enemies that get in his way. Released only in North America, which is why I say Genesis and not Mega Drive, so you can stop writing your angry comments now. Gargoyles was an action platformer that critics placed in the upper echelons of Disney games. High praise indeed. In fact, as far as Disney platformers go, you could say that Gargoyles is a stone cold classic. And number one, Toy Story. Disney made the jump to 3D in 1995 with its cinematic blockbuster Toy Story. Introducing the world to Woody and Buzz, the film delighted adults and kids alike with its state-of-the-art visuals and fascinating tale of toys coming to life. It was yet another franchise that was ripe for a video game adaptation, and Disney did not disappoint, releasing the official tie-in game close to the film's release. Toy Story is a platform that occasionally switches genre, allowing players to take control of Woody, as he negotiates various stages based on the plot and locations of the film. You'll be controlling RC cars in a couple of driving interludes and even switching to an atmospheric first-person viewpoint to explore the shadowy depths of the claw machine. The game was praised for its gameplay, graphics and innovative use of different genre styles, and it was a massive commercial success. According to game designer John Burton, the performance of the Toy Story game was actually the catalyst for other companies to start releasing movie tie-in games at the same time as their relevant films. So all those awful rushed movie games that have come since, alienating fans and wasting their franchise's potential, yeah, they're all Toy Story's fault. Thanks a lot, Woody.